Comrades, help me welcome to the microphone our next speaker. Our next speaker is the Honorable Richard Skerritt. Comrades and friends, good night. Good night to all the wonderful people in West Bastia. I want to say a special good night to all the young people I see in the audience here. What a wonderful turnout of young people. I was thinking to myself as I was sitting there looking into this wonderful crowd that I used to be a very young person in this constituency. I grew up just up the road up here. I moved here in 1962 before many of these young people were even conceived. 1962 at age six after my mother died, I moved not far up the road from up here as my father raised me. I lived in this constituency from age six to age 18. And I grew to understand that this constituency is a labor constituency. Always has been and always will be. Comrades and friends, this is a great constituency. It has rich history. It has wonderful people. It has some of the best stalwarts that you could find in the Labour Party. Still supporting the Labour Party. One of them is right down here, Miss Byron. As a boy, I had the privilege to be in her house eating she food. She lived over there in Cardin Avenue, and I live just up the road here at the corner of Jones Street and this particular St. Johnson Avenue. Jean is she daughter. And Jean, in spite of all of the things that has happened, Jean is a Byron. And I have respect for all the Byrons because this is a Byron country here. And I want to say hello to all the Byron family. It's sad, it's sad that the Byron that they imported into the family and who they set up and made the representative here that he has gone in the other direction. It is sad and unfortunately he has taken Gene with him. But this party continues to be strong and this constituency will continue to be strong for labor. Comrades and friends, there are some other stalwarts in the crowd tonight, and some who are not here. I want to say hello to. I want to say hello to Mr. Tobias, Rido Pes Tobias, sitting down in the corner down there. I first met him when he used to come to visit from time to time the great, the late national hero Paul Southwell. That's the first time I met him when I was a boy. And he's never, 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 never done anything else but support this party. And one of his best friends in life was the right excellent Robert Bradshaw. And today, one of his best friends in life is the right honorable Denzel Douglas. I also want to say good night to a gentleman on the stage, sitting very quietly, very humbly, and very meekly, the way he has always been. A man who has served this country well, both as a civil servant and as a minister of government. The man who opened his arms and welcomed me into cabinet. I want to say a special good night to Mr. Rupert Herbert. Herbie, please stand up.
comrades and friends, I also want to say good night to a gentleman who I understand got a very special gift yesterday. Mr. Earl Clark, I understand that he got a new leg yesterday and that he's feeling very happy and very proud. And we're very happy for him. And we look forward to him continuing to be a supporter and a big, big supporter of the Honorable Asim Martin and all of the candidates for labor for a long time to come. I wish him good health and I hope he'll continue to take good care of himself. But comrades and friends, I come here tonight to bring good news. Just about eight weeks ago, just about eight weeks ago, my boss, the Right Honorable Prime Minister, Denzel Douglas, called me and he said, Ricky, unfortunately, unfortunately, I'm going to have to ask the Honorable Timothy Harris to leave this cabinet. And depending on how things go, I might have to ask you to take over the Ministry of International Trade, Industry, Commerce, and Consumer Affairs. Well, the last thing I needed was to have more work to do. But as I do, I said to the Prime Minister, Boss, if that's what you want me to do, as long as I'm in this cabinet, you're the boss, and if that's what you ask me to do, and I have the health and strength to do it, I will give it my best. Well, as you know, things kind of happened, and a couple of changes, and then your representative, or former representative, as the case may be, then resigned. So it took a few days before I actually became that minister. But the good news is that I hit the ground running. I hit the ground running, as I always do. I brought my years of experience and my learnings and my understanding of business and the business community to work. And I started visiting some of the key employers. To my surprise, I found out that the former minister had been out there bad talking this government, blaming this government for anything and everything that the business community felt was not being done. And I have to say to you, that upset me greatly. Because in cabinet, I sit as a former president of the Chamber of Industry and Commerce. I sit as a former chairman and chief executive officer of a seriously big company in St. Kitts. I sit as somebody who has served on several boards of directors. And I cannot recall, I cannot recall any time that the former minister brought any issues of business to the cabinet, that cabinet did not give its support. The truth is that he hardly brought any. One of them that he never brought was the fact that Jaro Electronics needed to expand and they were desperate for space to develop. And when I met with Jaro Electronics within days of becoming minister and discovered that there was this outstanding need for expansion, immediately I set about to work to do everything I could to facilitate growth in a company that most of us thought was stagnant. At no time had the previous minister come to the cabinet and said that he needed space or he needed help or he needed anything to help Jarrah Electronics on his way to expansion. Well, comrades and friends, I'm happy to tell you that on Friday, this past Friday, two days ago, I sat in a meeting with the president of Jarrah Electronics who flew in here from the United States to see me and to do other business related to his interests here. But one of the things he came here to do was to see me as a result of the communications we have been having. And I'm happy to tell you that, and his name is Jim Mitchell, President Jim Mitchell. I'm sure that the former minister don't even know his name. 
I'd be surprised if he ever met him. <laughs> President Jim Mitchell has now announced to me that over the next two years, he will be spending $3 million expanding Jarry Electronics. And I discussed with him, I said, Mr. Mitchell, this is a labor government. We are happy that the business is going to be expanding and we are happy that we've been able to provide the space. We're providing a little bit of land and we're providing the former supply office building, which he's going to spend a fair amount of that money fixing up. I said, but we want you to spend some money on the staff as well. We want you to spend some money on the staff as well. And he said, Minister, yes, I intend to do that. But I'm open to suggestions. And we had a very good discussion. And I'm happy to say that the staff of Jarry Electronics, it won't be long before they'll be getting a salary increase. It won't be long before they'll be getting a staff cafeteria. And, miss, and I'm telling you, comrades and friends, that Jara Electronics is going to double in size, double in size, from over 200 workers to nearly 500 employees within the next three years. They've already started hiring. Last week, they've already started hiring, and they expect to hire immediately 60 new employees, 6-0. Tell the former minister that Ricky Skerritt said that while he was busy playing politics, while he was busy doing everything else other than his work. Companies out there needed help. Companies out there needed government support. And he wasn't paying any attention. Or maybe he was intentionally avoiding it so that the people could not benefit under Denzel Douglas because he wanted things to be bad under Denzel Douglas. That is the problem with those two. The problem I have with those two is they're set about to undermine Denzel Douglas and this government. And while they should be doing their jobs as ministers, they were too interested in the politics and playing all kind of fool with their colleagues in this united angry people against Douglas. Comrades and friends, that is what labor does. Labor looks out for opportunities to develop the economy in the interest of the people. Business must expand. Business must invest. But the people must benefit. There must be better jobs, better working conditions. So in six weeks, I have done the job of the former Minister of Industry and I've done the job of the former Minister of Labor. Tell them I said that. Comrades and friends, let me simmer down. If my boss was here, he would say, simmer down, Ricky. And you know the reason they don't like me? The reason they don't like me is because in cabinet I speak my mind. And I am very consistent, very consistent in what I'm in there for. I'm only in there for one thing. Service and for the good that we can do. That's why I'm there, that's why I'm here, and that's why I'm going to continue to be here as long as the Labour Party wants me here. But I'll say to you, unfortunately, unfortunately, it has come home to roost. It has come home to roost that these two, these two, I don't know what to call them. I, I, I got to be respectful that these two former colleagues, was so busy, was so busy trying to get the leadership and trying to get rid of Denzel Douglas that they were not doing their work. Remember, remember after 2010, when the Honorable Sam Condo was made Minister of National Security, what he did? He went through and through this island telling people that we were having high crime because Douglas wasn't giving the police what they needed. He went through and through the island telling people that we were having high crime because Astona Brown needed to go. Ambassador Astona Brown, one of the most respected permanent secretaries in St. Kitts and Nevis and the entire Caribbean. 
he set out to get rid of her because because he knew he knew that she would not allow him to do as he liked in there comrades and friends well it's the same police force but it's a new minister and a new commissioner that's the only thing that changed but the police force working better than ever before it ain't nothing different it's just better management better management and better leadership and that's what the labor party brings and that's what denzel douglas does wherever he needs to make changes he makes changes whatever he needs to do he will do and that is why they don't like him comrades and friends my job tonight is to tell you that you have every good reason to feel good about the labor party you have every good reason to feel good about this government. You have every good reason to have full confidence in the future of this country. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. I've got confidence. God is going to see. No matter what the case may be. I know he's going to fix it for me. Comrades and friends. My message tonight is very simple. Labor is better for you. All the rest of them, all the rest of them who hate Douglas, decided that it's better for them to come together for one reason, to get rid of Douglas. Not to develop the country, not to have a plan to make things better for people in this country, not to have a plan to bring forward solutions to any problems that we have in this country, not to try to bring about a better standard of living for the country. All they want is for Douglas to go. Douglas going is a plan? Is that a plan for this country? Is that the basis on which you can elect people? Just because of the hatred for Douglas? Comrades and friends, don't let them fool you. You know that this Labour government works hard on your behalf. You know that your prime minister and your cabinet ministers are the hardest working government ministers anywhere. Comrades and friends, you know that labor policies are best for you and your families. Do not, do not be fooled. Comrades and friends, we have to move this country forward. And now that the two former colleagues have gone, we're still moving forward. We saw the change coming. We made some adjustments. Some of us in cabinet were quiet. And eventually we said, no, this is a lot of nonsense. And we had our first press conference. You remember that? The ministers came out. We told the prime minister, we, we don't want you there. Stay out of this. This is between us and them. They're trying to give people the impression that it's between them and you. But this is between us and them. And I'm telling you now as Labour supporters, this is between all of us and them. Do not leave your Labour leader out there by himself. Because when you needed him, he was there for you. And now that he needs you, you better be there for him. Comrades and friends, your leaders under the dynamic dynamic captaincy of Dr. the Right Honorable Denzel Douglas has steered the ship of state through some choppy waters recently. It hasn't been easy. We've had some tough times. We've had some difficult decisions to make. We've had to tighten our belts sometimes when we didn't even want to. Some people have faced the sacrifice. All of us have tasted it in some form or fashion. Some have lost their jobs and have tasted it worse than others. But the good news is that things are getting better in 2013. All of the statistics are showing an upward movement. The economy is getting stronger. Investment is rolling in. Jobs are being created. Don't let them fool you. And that was part of the plan. We knew that things would be tough for a little while, but they would get better. 
2013 wasn't supposed to be an election year. Did any of you expect 2013 to be an election year? 2013 was the year that we are going to be recovering this economy and bringing back some of the goods and services that this government has delivered over and over again to the people. Expanding housing, expanding health insurance. Today, in the, they tell me today in, in the PAM convention, Eugene Hamilton say that when PAM gets in power, they're going to bring health insurance to the people. But how thief he could be. How thief could he be? He thiefing not just an idea, but a program that this government is well on the way to delivering. The Honorable Marcella Leibard has been speaking about health insurance for the entire country now for at least six months. The program is well on the way, and it won't be long before you hear more about it. They don't have any ideas of their own. They don't have any plans of their own. So they got to take labor things and try to repackage them and give them to PAM people. Comrades and friends, don't be fooled. My pleasure tonight has been to remind you that this constituency has a proud history. I mentioned that Paul Southwell lived in this constituency for many years. In July this year, the late Paul Southwell would have been 100 years old. Can you imagine how he must be turning in his grave as we get ready to celebrate what would have been his 100th birthday? We have this nonsense where the representative for number three has turned to the People's Action Movement. That is almost unbelievable, but true. Let me take the opportunity to say good night to the Southwell family. I hope they're hearing me. The family and friends of Paul Southwell will be celebrating in July that special time that would have been the 100th birthday of our national hero. And I invite all of you to celebrate with us as we tell you more about it in the coming weeks. Comrades and friends, this is a party of celebration. Celebration of rich history, celebration, celebration of good service to the people, celebration of successful social safety net programs, and celebration of a growing economy over many, many years. A celebration of young people developing themselves. You heard one of them on stage tonight. Some of them are in the audience who have gone away to study. Some of them, like Dr. Vance Gilbert, I saw him over here earlier who hopefully, who hopefully will be serving you in the not too distant future and we'll be seeing more of him up on this platform. Young people like the West Bastia constituency group chaired by the Honorable Jason Hamilton. Young people who have benefited from labor policies, who have bettered themselves and are now ready to serve you in this constituency and across this country. I'm proud to be part of it. I'm proud to be part of this great party. And I urge all of you to come out in your numbers over the Labor Weekend to support all of the activities. I was very privileged just this past Tuesday night to host a function for those wonderfully beautiful and talented and intelligent young ladies. I wish all of them good success in the show upcoming next weekend. So comrades and friends, have no fear. Let not your hearts be troubled. Stay strong with labor. Don't back back. Don't let them trouble you. Because labor is good. And all the time. Good night and have a happy labor weekend. Comrades, 
Let us give Comrade Ricky Skerritt a round of applause. The man who's doing good in the Ministry of Trade, doing good in tourism. More ships coming, cruise ships coming all the time now. In season and out of season ships coming out. Give Comrade Ricky Skerritt another round of applause.